Great, thanks for having me. Um, thank you. It's, uh, it's my first Augmented World Expo, so um, I'm really looking forward to what I get to be able to see. It. Tomorrow on the show floor, uh, the talks I've seen today so far have been, been pretty inspirational. So my job at Autodesk is to help drive AR and VR strategy for uh, the company, and um, a lot of that means um, making it so that architects, designers, people who work in the automotive trades, and people who make video games, films, TV, are able to um, create experiences for the next generation of devices, or maybe use those devices to create the next experiences. So let me get started. Autodesk, it's a pretty big company. Um, we cover a bunch of industries. We actually make tools to allow filmmakers to make the best visual effects out there. We make software to allow designers to build um, extremely complicated airports, buildings, etc. And we allow automotive um, and construction professionals to create the, the newest in mechanical objects and uh, designs to keep the world moving ahead. Basically, stuff that you use every day has most likely been touched by an Autodesk product. Um, we follow the design, make, use paradigm. That is uh, something that works in many of the industries that we cover, whether you're a video game designer, you're still designing something, then you make it and then it gets used, or you're a car manufacturer, you still have to design the thing, it gets manufactured, and then it is used by many people who drive vehicles. And Autodesk is a disruptor. Um, we were the first people to put a CAD product on a PC, and with AutoCAD 1.0, it was kind of laughed at. It was, it was cute, maybe the, the folks at um, our competitive companies like Dassault or, or later on PTC thought, okay, well that's interesting, but you're not using a real computer, you're not using you know, the digital um, uh, system that allows us to run full 3D. And throughout the 80s, uh, it turned out that the PC was like good enough for a lot of work. And when the Pentium Pro came out with Windows 3.1, and the AutoCAD 13 release that allowed us to drive um, 3D into a mass market. And so being there at the right time, at the right place, to enable people to have a 3D experience with a piece of equipment that didn't cost hundreds of thousands of dollars blew up the market. As a result, the companies that were competitive to Autodesk, that were beating out Autodesk early on, couldn't keep up. So I hope that that's, that's like a, uh, an indication of where we're going with new AR and VR technologies, because these technologies today are at consumer prices, but they are good enough and even excel at many experiences. And I want to talk a little bit about those uh, coming up. So Autodesk, again, is a disruptor, trying to drive that home. Let me talk a little bit about our, our spokesman back in the 80s, Timothy Leary, the most dangerous man in America. If we can have the volume up, please. Now, there are many words currently used to describe this ability to, to create new universes. We talk about virtual reality or artificial reality. Our prophet William Gibson has described the digital matrix, the conceptual hallucination of all human knowledge. Third out of this is called cyberspace, and uh, it's a nice place to be. Okay, so that's a real thing that actually happened. That was really Timothy Leary. Uh, and he was working with us early on in the, uh, the late 80s during that second wave of virtual reality when they were creating something called cyberspace. And what this was, was um, early thought leadership and, and guys that were way ahead of the curve thinking, wow, you know, imagine if you could design the thing and immerse yourself in that environment before it's built. You'd you would be able to remove all kinds of weird issues like, well, geez, is that, is that really how tall that's gonna be? All that ambiguity would go away. And if you visually look at the graphics, obviously it didn't, it didn't pan out, people got sick, um, but they, they were onto something. And today, many of uh, the trends that we're seeing are really continuing those initial thoughts, those initial uh, research projects that they went through. So, so the guy on the uh, right is uh, Alvar Green. He was the CEO of Autodesk at the time. And Chris Ailis on the other side were working um, 
with this, and they were showing off this project at SIGGRAPH in 1989 in Boston. Um, but of course, as you know, VR then took a total nosedive, and, uh, and it really wasn't until we had guys like this. And guys like this really drove our industry forward, because what I like about this photo is that this guy isn't drinking one milkshake while enjoying VR, he's actually drinking two milkshakes. And what this tells me is that maybe he's not getting as sick as he was during that second wave of VR in the 80s. So what does that mean for Autodesk today? Um, we have solutions, we have software, we have products and tools, services and apps, you know, the list goes on, that work in architecture, engineering, and construction, that work in the automotive industry, and that work for filmmakers, uh, TV production companies, video game developers. And that data is complicated. That's heavy duty data today. Um, we have a whole bunch of products that allow people to make this stuff. And we're the only company that has an AEC division, which is architecture, engineering, and construction, a manufacturing division, which covers automotive, uh, product design, et cetera, and a media and entertainment division. There are other companies that have you know, a media entertainment division and might do some visualization into the other areas. There are other companies that have AEC and manufacturing, but we're the only company that has all three. And so I'd like to put this idea forward that we're the ones that have this critical insight that allows us to take technology from one and bring it to the other. And that's not like a cakewalk. It's hard to do because it's, we're kind of talking apples and oranges, but at least it's all within like the Autodesk fruit basket. Again, Autodesk is a disruptor. Um, but the big challenge, as I'm sure many in this room are aware, being enthusiasts and professionals in augmented reality and virtual reality is like, OK, how do you get that data? I mean, that is pretty heavy duty data. How do you get that into an AR headset or a VR piece of equipment and allow people not to get sick when they go and immerse themselves virtually? Whether you're doing with AEC or you know, an extremely complicated model for a vehicle or like the Jungle Book, um, we don't really have a choice. We have to do it and we've done it, but we did a bunch of research to get there. So we looked at those challenges in visualizing your, your heavy duty, real deal data. And it's, today it's pretty expensive um, or it takes a long time and if you want to do it no matter who you are, you most likely have some form of expertise in getting the data from A to B. Uh, maybe you've written tools, maybe you've hired a contractor or a specialist company to come in and do the work for you, but it is, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And, and the worst thing is that if you make a change when you're immersed in that environment with your, your clients or your customers to look at this design, um, it's not like it goes back you know, it doesn't like it go back up the river and allow you to have that change impact on the, uh, in the design tool. So it's a one-way street. So I'd like to talk a little bit about three interesting projects at Autodesk that are trying to address this, and, and I would say quite successfully. So Autodesk Revit Live is a product uh, powered by Stingray that allows you to take the kind of dry and technical um, design data for designing buildings quickly get it into uh, an immersive and virtual reality experience where it's not any more complicated than clicking two buttons and, and you're in. Um, and you get, as a designer, you get a bunch of freebies that are kind of tough to do, like light studies, the ability to um, bring people into VR with you, uh, nice materials that are, that are good enough for many of the cases. And so this has gotten a lot of traction. And it works with consumer grade VR headsets. Whereas if we were doing this even like three or four years ago, it would be, okay, well, I guess we have to build a cave or we have to do some kind of custom VR thing. And so this is now a $30 a month expense versus $10,000 for the contracting firm to do the work plus the cost of the cave. And the architectural firms that are using this are moving from using this for special client reviews 
to adding it into the normal design cycle. Like their designers, because it's so cheap, are just using this to go themselves into virtual reality and see their own designs before they even show anyone else. VRED, or FRED, is um, an automotive design uh, visualization tool. And this takes that sense of place that you've got with Revit Live, which I just showed, but adds in um, a, an absolute ne uh, necessity around the visual fidelity. So here you can see two people collaborating. This is actually in our Munich office um, around uh, car designs. And this is you know, not doctored data. This is the real visual fidelity that they get out of um, doing a live virtual reality experience with, with VRED. And then we're looking at what this might mean for folks in the entertainment industry. So Autodesk Maya, connected to Stingray, allows for filmmakers to go into virtual reality as the actors, drive characters using the engine's um, properties to enable, in this case, how to train your dragons, dragons flapping their wings while they fly through these complicated shots. And then the director holding a virtual camera, allowing him or her to drive the different um, you know, looks and angles that they want to get. And what they get as a result is maybe quick iteration, but almost more importantly is they get those happy accidents. They get to see and record something that would have been very difficult to do if it wasn't done live and interactively. So what's our advantage? I would say that our advantage is the fact that we've got uh, expertise, tools, and services that span three big industries, architecture, engineering, construction, manufacturing, and film, TV, and video games. We're the only company that does this, and we're really excited about bringing technology, especially from M&E, into these other industries, and vice versa. Well, I'm, I come from a filmmaking background, and I'm amazed at the hard problems which have been solved in AEC and manufacturing, which we could take advantage of. Conversely, I've spent many years now working with AEC folks, and the technology that M&E has, Media Entertainment, to allow for them to visualize their content in real time is pretty outstanding. Let me quickly scan through Stingray here. I know we're running out of time. Stingray itself is a real-time engine. Um, it's, it's got the same visual quality, the same interactivity that you would expect with any modern real-time engine today. The difference is that it belongs to Autodesk, so we can go into it from our design tools faster, cheaper, quicker, than, uh, and with better quality than our competitors can. And I want to talk a little bit about the table stakes of tomorrow. So where I think Autodesk will excel will be um, around everything is collaborative. So whether your team is located in three locations worldwide and you need to review a design together, the tools that we've got will enable you to do that. Um, we'll all be connected. So the data will live around central storage. Uh, and you'll be taking your own lens into that data and making changes versus taking an offline file, making a change, and putting it back and realizing that it doesn't work with something that someone else did. Um, it'll always be in context. So AR is obviously super important with this. And again, Autodesk is a disruptor. Thank you very much.